Good afternoon. This video is going to be about the horned headdress wearer that went into the United States Capitol building on January 6, 2021. I realize this video is a little bit later than other videos that people have put out or information because there has been a lot of misinformation. And so what I want to do is try to set the record straight. And most of this video is going to be his own words. And, well, we'll just get right into the video. This first video is a clip from KNXV TV out in Arizona. In the meantime, hundreds of investigations are underway related to the riots in the Capitol. Yeah, the Department of Justice says they've opened nearly 100 criminal cases. One suspect under investigation, Jacob Chansley from Arizona, also known as Jake Angeli, the QAnon shaman. He appeared by video in a federal court this afternoon. This photo shows him on the Senate dais uh, during the riots. Prosecutors say it's in these moments that he wrote and left a threatening message for the vice president. ABC 15 investigator Melissa Blasey is staying on top of this case for us. She was in the federal courtroom as a judge ruled Chancellor will stay in jail. The judge said Jacob Chansley was a symbol of what had occurred at the U.S. Capitol, which she described as a violent insurrection. The judge also said that Chansley had no belief what he did was wrong, not in a mentally ill way, but in a righteous way. A stark difference from his appearance at the U.S. Capitol covered in coyote pelt horns and tattoos. Jacob Chansley, bald with a shorter beard, wearing an orange jumpsuit as he appeared by video conference from his holding cell. Prosecutors offered new evidence, saying Chansley inside the Capitol yelled into his bullhorn, telling other raiders to take out several congressmen. And at the Senate chamber dais, he allegedly scrawled a note to Vice President Pence saying, it's only a matter of time, justice is coming. The prosecutor colored just about everything to make Jake look violent. He wrote something like, justice is coming. And you know, if you're a Christian, you know that justice is coming, right? The Bible says so. Several of Chansley's supporters were at the federal courthouse in Phoenix today. Jake is a good guy. He's an American citizen. Oh, goddamn bro. Okay, please. No, he's an American citizen. He's a, he's a patriotic guy. Okay, he. I've never seen Jake ever do anything bad. He's been like a teacher, a role model. Jacob Chansley faces a six count federal indictment with two felonies and four misdemeanors. If convicted, he could be sentenced to 25 years in prison. Because of that potential long prison term, the nature of the crime disrupting government and ignoring police, and the fact Chansley had planned to attend Joe Biden's inauguration next week, Judge Deborah Fine determined the 33 year old was too much of a danger to the community and a flight risk. She ordered him held in federal custody and transferred to Washington, D.C. to stand trial. Chansley's mom quickly left the courthouse after the ruling. Are you surprised by the judge? Decision. No, no. Have you been able to talk to Jacob? What has he told you? Serious and stoic through most of the hearing, Jacob Chansley did ask to speak after the judge's ruling, but she shut him down, saying she wanted to preserve his Fifth Amendment right against self incrimination. At the very end, he uttered, Oh my God. I'm investigator Melissa Blasius, ABC 15, Arizona. So that is where Jacob Angeli is in prison, facing felonies and misdemeanors for his conduct. Now, I keep a picture of William McCarthy, also known as William McCarthy, also known as Billy Bonnie, also known as Billy the Kid, on my wall right there. And the reason I do that is because things are not always as they appear. Some things are, but not all things. Billy the Kid thought he was in the right because he was fighting the elitists, the cattle barons who were in bed with the bankers, who were all in bed together with the United States government. And people were getting abused. Now, what I do find comical <clears throat> not in a ha-ha way, 
But what I do find comical is these elected officials who say that this was an insurrection, a violent insurrection. Billy the Kid whistled silver threads among the gold, and that was the last tune anyone would hear before gunshots rang out. And the reason he whistled that tune was because that was a tune that his mother used to whistle to him quite often. So if you if you have the last name of McCarthy or McCarty, uh, Billy the Kid is out there as a leaf on the tree somewhere because they come from the southwestern district around Cork and Kerry of Ireland, the McCarthy clan. But there's another reason I keep Billy the Kid on my wall. Not only to remind me that things aren't always as they appear, and that some people who are labeled as villains may not be. It's just that history is written by the victors. But you know that top hat and that iconic photo that Billy wears? Well, that was a costume. That was a prop. That was something that Billy the Kid put on because that was his nature. That was his sense of humor. He liked to laugh. He liked to have a good time. As a matter of fact, I've made videos and they're not on my channel anymore. I've been asked to put them back on, but they're Varg videos where I wear a wolf Varg. means wolf. I wear a wolf mask and I make the videos at night so the mask looks more spooky. I disguise my voice and I have fun. And I try to reach a different type of audience. My video, those videos were short, very concise and to the point. And it was just to kind of capture. And I would imagine that's exactly what Jake Angeli does, maybe with his horned headdress and his face paint. I am not calling into question his patriotism. I don't know the man. All I know are his words. Now, there is a lot of misinformation, so let's get right into some of that. The first thing, this photo right here. This is Willie, the head's groundkeeper and janitor at the Springfield Elementary School on The Simpsons Show. This meme was made to mock Jacob Angeli. And it was done for a reason. And the reason is in some of Jake Angeli's own videos that he puts out. And at the, toward the end of this video, I'm going to give you snippets of that, of one of them. He talks with a Scottish accent. So more than likely, this meme was made because of that, because of his own, own videos and what he does in them. Now, some people have given out the misinformation that this is like a stolen valor that Angeli is doing. By wearing that horned headdress, he makes a mockery of shamanism of American Indians because the American Indians wore the headdress and they had to attain a certain level before they could do that. And so... I've heard people say that this is like a stolen valor. Well, we've seen these headdresses in other places. When I was a kid, I saw the headdresses in the Flintstones. There's Fred and Barney. There's the Graham Poobah. So these were the horned headdresses. But we've also seen these in cave paintings. Now, the people that are saying this about this stolen valor and wearing the horned headdress are saying it based on the photographs taken of American Indians. Well, they didn't have photographic equipment in the old world during the pagan days of our ancestors. So what would they have? They had cave drawings. In the late 1800s, early 1900s, 
there are American Indian writings that state that a pagan white man was here before them and that they were more moral and virtuous than the white man they were dealing with at the time, the Judeo-Christian. And that this pagan white man who was here before them taught them everything they know. And then over the course of time, they intermarried together, the white man and the red man. And then one day, they, they departed. But their knowledge had remained. So we would expect to see similarities in the prehistoric cave drawings, the petroglyphs. Well, here is a petroglyph that I took from the Historical Atlas of Native Americans. Okay, you'll notice top right corner above the wheel is a horned figure. You can't miss it. A little bit further to the left is another figure that's an antlered figure. There's an obvious difference. Now, if we go to the Gundrastrup cauldron, we see a horned figure with the wheel. You see the same wheel on the American petroglyph that was from Utah. The Gundrastrup cauldron. Everyone feels as though it's uh, of Gaelic design, even though it was found in Denmark. And I put some of my own drawings of the Gundestrup cauldron in Northern Paganism, Baba Yaga unveiled, and I've given a proper interpretation of that cauldron, whereas Judeo-Christianity has interpreted it with their bias and their demeaning nature toward our pagan ancestors. I've interpreted it correctly. But that's the Gunderstrip Cauldron. Here we have a UK petroglyph. If we look down in the bottom right, we see an antlered figure. If we move up to the left, we see a horned figure. And that's in the UK. Now we also have in Scandinavian petroglyphs. Now there are obviously horned figures. One, the, the one's head is kind of blocked. I don't know. It, it's probably horns, but you have four of them there. Three definite horned figures above a ship. Next one. There's another one at the rear of the ship, the tall one on the left, horned figure. These are similarities that would say horned headdresses are in the old world as well. Here's another one, one on the, on the top ship, one on the left side, another on the right side, horned headdresses. This one is in Sweden. So we have a similarity. So to say that this is a stolen valor and it had nothing to do with white people or Europeans is, uh, well, it's not accurate. Next, the tattoos of Angeli. Because there is so much misinformation about these tattoos, especially the top tattoo, the Valk note. So I'll play this video here. Can you tell us anything about the Viking man whose image has literally gone viral across the world? Yes, so this man was certainly a prominent figure at the Capitol on Wednesday. And us at the Observer's team, we wanted to take a closer look at his tattoos. Um, so those tattoos have caught the attention of people all over social networks. Um, here you can see a few of those symbols that are on his torso. And if you take a closer look, on the top is the Valknut which is a Viking symbol. Uh, it's nowadays associated with right, white supremacy and neo-Nazism. Below that, you have the Tree of Life, and underneath that is Thor's hammer. 
Um, so none of these symbols um, that are from ni uh, Norse and Viking origins, they don't necessarily have racist origins, but the fact is they've been appropriated by a number of modern white nationalist groups. Okay. I am just going to let that exist there for a moment because because a person is white, because a person is a patriot, because a person has Viking tattoos. Now this next clip is an audio clip that Angeli had done on another show uh, where he is describing his tattoo, the Valknut. And they were bringing up your triangle tattoo or something. And people. Oh my God. The Valknot. Yes. It's called the Valknot or Odin's Knot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that is a uh, shape or a symbol that is put over the tombs of Vikings who died honorably in battle without any fear. Okay. His definition of what a Valknut is, is based upon the misinformation that has been handed to neo-pagans, to modern paganism, about our own ancient ancestral belief system. And they get to that by combining Valor, which means slain, with Newt, which means not. I've already covered this in a previous video. That is a bogus definition handed to uh, modern paganism of what our ancestors believed. Our ancestors were children of the light. Paganism is children of the light. What we've been handed is a total, complete manipulation of what our belief system was. <clears throat> Excuse me. So then we have this person here. This person is a Christian. And he circles and points an arrow to the Vulk note with a couple question marks. And then he says, pedophile, look up the tat. Again, deep state, one of Clinton and Epstein's buddies. That is asinine. That is just asinine. The Vulk note is a sacred symbol and it is attached to, to Odin because Odin is that spirit, that warrior spirit that gets reborn. Now, there are some who are saying it's a triple triangle, which the triple triangle is a, uh, it's a symbol of pedophilia. Here are the variations. Triple triangle. This one here, I won't even attempt to pronounce. It's a Zulu token like a valentine called and is worn around the neck. The downward pointing blue triangle inside a red band, inside a white, worn by a girl, means something like, will you be my love? A boy's request to a girl would be the same, but the triangle would be pointing upward as the symbol for a girl. So that's one of the triple triangles. Here's the next one. This one means success, protection against evil, it's Sumerian and Viking. And here's another one. It's the Yanni. It's a symbol for the vulva. We've spoken extensively about the Yanni and the vulva and even Jonah and how uh, Jonah is, his name is a symbol of the vulva in our book, Northern Paganism Exposing Abraham, to show how it was all manipulated. Now, we have people that are saying that Angeli was part of Antifa and BLM. So this, this one was put out by uh, the attorney, Lynn Wood. Now, I don't know if he made it, or if he just put his stamp on there at support Lynn Wood. But he put the two, the two pictures are side by side. One is the Arizona BLM rally of 2019, and the other one is the DC Capitol, January 6, 2021. And they're trying to 
make a connection and say, Angeli is BLM. So is he? Well, here is Angeli's own words. Um, is he Antifa? So you want to know, you want to know ultimately, like, first of all, why I'm, you want me to defend myself on all this Antifa bullshit, basically? Yeah, I mean, so, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So here, let's just get into it, okay? All right. Um, number one, uh, the photo that was taken of me at a uh, thing in Tempe was uh, a photo taken while I was either, one, marching with the police officers that were there, okay. or two, another, after I just got done screaming, communism has no place in the United States and Antifa has no place in the United States. Okay. He continues. You know, um, I can tell you a couple of other things about Antifa and about BLM intel that I got while I had the balls to go to these rallies and call these motherfuckers out. Okay. okay? These people were carrying literally satanic pentagrams, okay, on their flags, on their masks, on their face, on their shirts. Okay. Okay. So that's number one. Number two. They were talking about things like socialism and communism openly. They were they were calling each other comrade and stuff like that. Okay. Three, there was not one iota of facts or of truth relayed at these rallies. It was a bunch of people gathering around, yelling and screaming, complaining and blaming the world. Now I'm going to go back to that woman who was describing the vault newt as a being adopted by white supremacists. I've watched on news some of those BLM and Antifa riots. And I've even watched some of the, the, the MAGA rallies where BLM and Antifa showed up. And I did see signs that said, uh, that on the opposite side that were in part of Antifa and BLM that's that had pagans written on it, right? Pagans written out. And it had some st other stuff written under uh, against, against Nazism and against fascism is what the sign said. The newswoman pointed out that one tattoo on that one person made sure those, words were thrown out there. Neo-Nazi, white supremacy. But people can parade around with communist symbols and socials, fascist, because Antifa and BLM, while they may have, well, the acronym Antifa may stand for anti-fascist. Everything they do is fascist. It was done under fascist regimes. Everything they support the world tree tattoo is directly under the tattoo of the vault note. It is the modern depiction of the tree of life. Some people call it the world tree. The world tree in Northern paganism, Norse paganism around the entire planet is the yew tree. The Northern pagan world tree, tree of life, is the tree that never goes dormant, that never dies, a tree of life, the world tree. The one underneath that is uh, the, the big black blob on his uh, lower rib cage is Mjolnir, and it's Thor's hammer. So now here is Jake Angeli at the January 6, 2021 event. And this is where we're going to start getting into who Jake Angeli is. All the other things are the headdress, why he wears it, uh, the, the, the tattoos, what they actually mean and what they try to say they mean, the uh, misassociation of him to Antifa and BLM instead of the right. He was there 
in his mind as a patriot. This is who he is from him. Oh, no! Yay! There's the national! Yay! National! Yay! Yeah, no, no! Oh! I practice shamanism. And the whole idea is that shamans dress up in elaborate fashion. They sing, they dance, they shout. You know, to get people's... No, they don't. This man is not a shaman. That kind of screaming in the Old Norse is called glomsini. It is just meant to distract you. Shamanism is not about chaos. It's about focus. It's about attaining a higher level of knowledge, but not through chaos, screaming and yelling and making noises. Drawing attention to yourself, which seems to be the road we're going down. But how did he get there? Attention to change what is called the neuro-linguistic programming in people's minds, where they have a, a very specific paradigm that they view the world through. And this whole thing is meant to disrupt that paradigm and get people to start thinking differently, start seeing the world just a little... Okay. Before we get to how he got there, you do not get people thinking differently through screaming gibberish in their face at the top of your lungs through a megaphone. I understand the point he's making that people have been gaslighted. They have been indoctrinated to have a certain worldview that is based solely around Judeo-Christian and Muslim because that is what they were, that is what our ancestors were forced to believe. They were forced converted, and then, as I've said all along, the third generation then on, then spews it forward. Screaming and yelling, Glomsini, does not change that. You have to re-educate yourself. You have got to, well, discover paganism and the light that will guide you through. And that comes through research, not through screaming. A little bit differently. How has Open Your Mind led you here? Well, first of all, opening my mind, opening my heart to God is what led me here. We're doing our own form, our own American form of gathering together in a shamanic tradition and taking back our country based off of common core values. You see, it's about culture. It's about culture and the fact that our culture has been hijacked by communists and globalists for way too long. And they've indoctrinated our students, they've indoctrinated our, our college students, our children, shit, into believing that America's bad when it's the antithesis of bad. America is the beacon of freedom, love, is, is the only nation founded on the idea of all human beings being created equal and, the, and endowed by their creator with certain unalienable God-given rights. This is the only country in the history of the world that has ever done that. And it will not fall. We will not allow it to fall. Okay. Like I said, you can't question his patriotism. But as you're facing felonies and misdemeanors and a potential 25-year sentence, uh, you're pretty much out of the game. So... He was sent by God, but yet he claims to be a shaman. All right, let's continue. Next clip. Inside the Capitol. What does that screaming do? It doesn't, it doesn't do anything to your mind. It just hits him screaming and then what happens all the cameras go to hey. him this is him walking in fucking hey man glad to see you guys you guys are fucking patriots look at this guy he's got pounding blood god bless you god bless you i don't already know i'm gonna take this i'm gonna take this see you guys straight up because my hands are in front of the church i'm not one to usually take pictures of myself but in this case i think i'm gonna accept you hey can if you were like
Here comes the notes. This is our capital. Let's be respectful to him. There's four million people coming in, so it's a lot of control. We love the We love the It's all a matter of time. Justice is coming. Hmm. Did he write that? As the other Christian in the in the previous clip said, that Christians believe justice is coming to all. Wow. This next section really kind of locks it right in on who Angeli is. Now, I've been pointing out in so many of my previous videos, and we've pointed out in just about every book that we've written, but especially in Northern Paganism Exposing Abraham, that the God of the Bible is the God of darkness, ignorant darkness, and chaos. When I say that northern pagans are children of the light, that is because we are children of the goddess. We are children of mother goddess. We were matriarchal peoples. And growth and increase and the light was part of our fiber. It's who we were. The only way that that could be removed from us or concealed within our blood memory was through forced conversion by ignorant darkness, the three cults of Abraham, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. All three of them are guilty of crimes against humanity, crimes against our pagan ancestors, every single one of those Abrahamic cults. Not only did they use barbaric, savage tactics, they gaslighted people. I cannot say that enough. They gaslighted people. That's why I made that one video. You repeat. In order to undo the gaslighting, you've got to repeat. Jesus is fake and the Bible is a fraud. Allah is fake, and the Quran's a fraud. Yahweh is Yeltabouth, and he is ignorant darkness. And he's a fake and a fraud. He was invented by those writers merely to supplant paganism and our ancestors, our northern pagan ancestors. So here is Jacob Angeli. Now watch what he does. As a self-proclaimed shaman. It's disgusting. Jesus Christ! We invoke your name! Amen! Amen! Amen. Let's, all Let's all say a prayer. Let's all say a prayer in a sacred space. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for gracing us with this opportunity. Thank you. Let me take a Move his hat. Move his headdress. Oh, oh. And his hat. Disrespectful. For this opportunity to stand up for our God-given unalienable rights. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for giving the inspiration needed to these police officers to allow us in this building, to allow us to exercise our rights, to allow us to send a message to all the tyrants, the communists, and the globalists that this is our nation, not theirs. That we will not allow the America, the American way of the United States of America to go down. Thank you, divine, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent creator God for filling this chamber with your white light of love, with your white light of harmony. Thank you for filling this chamber with patriots that yes, love you Lord. and that love Christ. Yes. Thank you, divine, omniscient, omnipotent, and omnipresent creator God for blessing each and every one of us here and now. Amen. Thank you, divine creator God for surrounding and filling us with the divine, omnipresent white light of love and protection, peace and harmony. Thank you for allowing the United States of America to be reborn. Thank you for allowing us to get rid of the communists, the globalists, and the traitors within our government. We love you and we thank you. In Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Did you hear that at the end? Hey men, and then and then several of them shout out a a woman. Okay, Angeli is is all right. First off, trust me, I am not defending 
BLM, nor Antifa. They are domestic terrorist groups. They are protected by the Democrats in power, 100%. They were allowed to do violence in major Democrat cities just about the entire year. So I am not defending them, but he's not Antifa and he's not BLM. He is a Christian on the right. No pagan is going to say, in Christ's holy name, thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your son, because it's bullshit. And then they said, amen and a woman. <laughs> all right, all right. I just, all right, for the... I realized the person who calls himself a pastor that said that in in uh, Congress, he may I think he's a Congress person now. He was he probably got his pastor's certificate from a bubble gum machine or or went online and paid twenty bucks and had someone send him a thing that said he's a pastor, uh, or like Al Sharpton, uh, he was running around at six years old and you know. He talked a lot, so his family said, uh, you, you talk like a reverend. So everybody started calling him the reverend. Now he's a reverend. That's, that's a nickname. Amen is not, first off, it's not said like that. In those Hebrew and Greek texts, because the Greek word is just carried over from the Hebrew, it's amen, amen. And it means that you agree. You are in accord. You, whatever was just said, you say amen. So in order for you to make that into, well, you have to recognize the man and the woman. It's, it's silly. It's, but you'd have to say amen. It sounds like I'm ordering Chinese food. I'll take some amen, please. So, that is who Angeli is. He is a right-wing, Christian, conservative, patriot. His tattoos do not mean pedophilia or battle slain. His headdress is uh, a costume, a prop for attention. Kind of like Billy the Kid's hat, top hat, was there. It was a prop. Kind of like my Varg mask. It's a prop. It's, it's something fun. However, pagan people, our ancestors, who wore those headdresses, it wasn't a prop to them. So while we can do these things, like, well, Billy the Kid can do this too, to laugh as a joke. Well, I'll wear my Varg mask as a laugh. It's, it's fun. It's a way to cut loose a little bit. This is to make him something, to make you believe he's something that he's actually not. He is not a pagan shaman. He is a, he, he's chaotic. You can tell by the way he screams and yells. Oh, he's, he, he's, he, he knows some word salad to throw out there, but he is not a shaman. Now, how did he get to these delusions? Well, I took this off of a video on his rumble feed that it was a Captain America video that he made. And he calls himself, well, no longer Captain America. He was Captain America. He got promoted. He's now a five-star admiral who is the protector of the United States of America. Here's his own words. This is a little bit longer clip, and I'll just interrupt it where I feel as though I need to. Um, we're talking about beings that come from a different dimension. In, in my case, we're just going to talk about my case in particular. Okay, in my case, I come from an extremely high frequency dimension of light, love, peace, and harmony, like an angelic dimension that I actually remember where I came from, but we'll get into that in a little bit. 
So with that said, these individuals that come from these other dimensions, these super soldiers, they have a highly dense neural connectivity in their brain. They have highly dense neural connectivity in their brain, which gives them sur- like superhuman levels of intelligence. How did it get It that? gives them really, really large, large IQs. He tells you. That being said, these individuals that have these extremely high connectivity in their brains, these like genius levels of intelligence, they also have the ability to, of affecting the other dimensions of reality because their intelligence and the, the quote unquote height to their intelligence is actually the height of a frequency that is this information processor that is the human body, the ability to process this signal of the collective mind and all of the information that is accessible within the DNA and within the collective unconscious. Know that I've been working hand in glove as I and many other super soldiers have been for quite some time. To, against evil interdimensional forces. And we are fighting for life, we are fighting for good, we are, and we are at war. Not everything is gonna be clean. This Chinese virus, coronavirus scare is a necessary event. Do you trust the military? I hope so, because we're about to tell you everything. Do you trust the chain of command? I hope so. But they're the ones that asked me to step forward. Believe me, it took a lot of poking and prodding for me to get, come forward and say all this stuff, you have no idea. So why am I able to do this? Well, first of all, the reason why I'm able to do this is because I actually have all these top secret clearances, but I have not signed any non-disclosure agreements. So because this is warfare, because the goal of this war is to get full disclosure out to the people, to get these cures out to the people, to uh, detangle ourselves, disentangle ourselves from this globalist cabal, then this is the way that we're going to do it. So because I haven't signed any non-disclosure agreements, but because I have all these uh, above top secret clearances, because I've been a part of the super soldier program for quite some time, and because I'm a five-star admiral, I'm able to release all of this information to the public without any negative legal ramifications, which is not something that can be said for my colleagues, for the other people within the military that have signed non-disclosure agreements and have gained these ranks that they've gained generals, colonels, admirals, etc. after decades of military service, whereas my type of military service was something else entirely. So what was my type of military service? Well, my type of military service was regarding the use of one, plant medicines, two, the use of yogic shamanic techniques regarding the awakening of the kundalini energy and the opening of the third eye, and three, the harmonic balancing of the chakras and the resonance patterns within the spirit or the soul, and doing this again and again and again, reaching higher and higher states of consciousness that go beyond the physical body. Now, because I have developed my kundalini awakening in my chakras into these higher dimensional levels, I'm actually able to affect the quantum hologram, which is based off of all these invisible frequencies of light, much more drastically than say the quote unquote average person. Just like all the other super soldiers are also able to affect the quantum hologram in this same way. Okay. But from what I understand, my abilities are of another level. And that's also part of the reason why I'm able to come forward and why I'm able to say all this, why I'm able to do this. And why because I'm in, in a very, very unique position. Felony and misdemeanor we have, we've worked it out where if this happens, if I step forward, if, if X, Y, and Z is said, then hopefully that will give enough information and inspiration to individuals within the Q community to awaken to their true potential, for people to really begin to grasp what the human spirit is capable of, what the mind is capable of, their true potential, and like unlock the potential of their brain. We're talking about not just people having the ability to raise their IQs, but people having the ability to raise the frequency of their consciousness into these higher dimensions and thusly keep our planet safe on like a long-term basis against any lower evil uh, other dimensional forces now with that said the part of the reason why i was chosen for this is because very early on when they recruited me for this because usually with this type of stuff you're recruited very very early on from when you're like a kid um when i was a kid i had deja vu all the time all the time and a lot of the time i would have deja vu based off of dreams that i had had previously 
And what I would tell myself is like in the dream is like, okay, if I have this as a deja vu, that means first of all, I can see the future. Second of all, that means that there's these other abilities that human beings have that, 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 you know, psychic abilities that we, we have been told we don't have. That also means that, you know, this idea of having these abilities is a reality that, that, you know, I can see the future. I can do this type of stuff. And then I would have it as a deja vu. And it's like, whoa, whoa. So when that happens a lot, when that happens enough, eventually you start recognizing the pattern and going, okay, okay, so this is legit. This is real. This whole idea of dreams working in conjunction with waking reality and these two things kind of like the yin and the yang of the universe and of consciousness, this idea really began to take hold. And I began to see how I was able to create reality so long as I followed my heart or so long as I followed this destiny that I knew deep, deep, deep down had something to do with these deja vus. Because within these deja vus, I would always have this vibe of, and all of this stuff, ability to see the future, having these abilities, it means that I have some sort of a destiny. I'm supposed to like use this somehow. I don't understand, but I'm supposed to use it somehow. Then I started having dreams of moving things with my mind and flying around and all sorts of stuff. So life became very, very interesting, but also uh, the patterns became very clear. And I'm talking from a very early age. So there was a time when I was around 13 years old after all this stuff with these deja vus and these dreams and recognizing these patterns and all that around 13 years old. Well, I'll say this during this time of all these deja vus, I was also questioning a lot like, what is God? What is reality? Why am I here? What is going on? What is happening to me? Why is this happening? Um, what is the soul? What is life? What is death? All of these questions that most people either allow religions to answer for them or just kind of think that they will never find the answers to. I just kept digging and digging and digging and digging and digging. And then around 13 years old, um, I had a uh, experience with a friend of mine where um, I got really, 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 really high, so high that I had an out of body experience where I actually like realized that I was my soul, that I was this field of energy as opposed to my physical body. And I saw everything around me as though it was alien, as though I was on an alien world. My friend looked like an alien. His dog looked like an alien. My hands, I looked like an alien. The whole planet looked alien. It looked like I was seeing everything for the first time. I saw energy moving and pulsating and waving through every fabric of space and every dimension, okay? And uh, I was so mind blown that I was just laughing and laughing and laughing and laughing. I, I wasn't afraid at all. I thought, oh, finally, I got an answer to all of these questions that I've been asking. I, got, I basically understood everything in the universe without being able to articulate any of it verbally. Okay. I know and realize that cannabis and its oils have medicinal value. There's word that cannabis oil can cure some forms of cancer. There's the, the cancer patients use marijuana now. The THC is a, is a relieves the pain. Possibly our pagan ancestors smoked marijuana to relax them, to disconnect your mind from everything. I'm not saying it did. I'm just saying possible. I'm trying to give, I'm trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. So possibly they did. The, the founding fathers of America grew marijuana as a cash crop. I don't know. A lot of people don't know that maybe. They grew it as a cash crop. Did they smoke it? No, they didn't write it in any of the founding documents, but they're growing it as a cash crop. That's all I'm going to say. I know it's good for the soil. I know it has a multitude of uses. I'm not saying it should be legalized. I'm not saying it should be kept illegal. Alcohol was made illegal for a certain amount of time. There's a lot of religion and religious excuses that, are put out by churches that keep marijuana 
illegal. There is a lot of money tied up with the pharmaceuticals that keep marijuana from entering into the realm of medicine for healing purposes. His claim, your ancestors use cannabis for health, may or may not be true. That's why I was laughing. <laughs> then around age 17, Barack Obama, around my age 17, Barack Obama was running for the Senate. And I had a vision. I had a vision of the future regarding Barack Obama. Pause it right here for a moment because it's very easy to say after the fact that you had a future, that you had a vision back then of something that has already happened. That's... That's very easy to do. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Regarding Barack Obama running for the presidency in 2008 and winning and winning again in 2012, I also had a vision that in the same vision that Hillary Clinton was the prostitute of Babylon riding the Scarlet Beast and that she was going to run for the uh, presidency in 2016 and she was going to lose. Okay, so I, I had a I had a vision basically that Barack Obama was the quote unquote beast or the antichrist from Revelation. In the same vision, I also had the vision that Francis Arinze was going to be the false prophet because he was uh, talking about getting along with the Muslim world, yada yada yada. And part of the reason why I believed that Barack Obama was the antichrist was first of all I remembered him from before I was born. I remembered seeing his face before I was born and knowing like oh there there's a red flag right there. Okay. Secondly, I discerned the numbers of his name. Barack Hussein Obama is 18 letters long, six plus six plus six. Okay. And I correlated the fact that the United States was invading these uh, Islamic countries, these Middle Eastern countries, as so many ancient empires have before in history. And that Obama, the Middle Eastern terror. I've already covered in a previous video that Barack Hussein Obama and 666 are not correlated together. We've put in our book, Northern Paganism, Exposing Abraham, exactly what the mark of the beast is, why it's 666. It's another attack on our pagan culture from Christianity. It is another attack against Mother Goddess. It has nothing to do with Barack Hussein Obama. This is a perfect example that too many drugs will mess you up. That Obama, the Middle Eastern terrorism, this Francis Arinze being the, possibly being the Pope, and all, the, all this stuff was in my vision, as was Hillary Clinton being the prostitute of Babylon. Played by Jim Caviezel, who also played Jesus, by the way, uh, in, uh, in Passion of the Christ, which had a huge influence on me. Aside from the, I mean, including the fact that I had all this vision about Barack Obama and I'm going around telling everybody all this stuff about he always the Antichrist and the end times are coming and all this other stuff. End times. To actually Christian. fly to the sun. And I have walked across the surface of the sun. I have seen events that are so tiny, so fast, that they could hardly be said to have occurred at all. Trust me, we all have this capability. It's just Along the way, I believed in myself. I believed in these abilities that I had. I believed in myself so much that I was willing to say, take a step into the unknown with faith in God that there would okay. be something there. With his faith in God, you too can fly to the sun and walk on the surface of the sun. This man is a Christian. Everything he is citing to you is directly out of the Christian Bible. This is not shamanic. He did not go into the United States Capitol and sit in the Senate dais and light incense and perform a shamanic ritual. He went in there and prayed to God in Christ's holy name. His words. His words. Amen and a woman. That there would be something there. So at the time, they had recruited me into their group of super soldiers, which was actually relatively small at that time. And uh, they, they basically were recognizing, oh, holy shit, Jake, 
walked across the surface of the sun, dude. How did you do that? <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. It was just, I, I just did it, I guess. You know, I don't know. I'm just a guy that figured some stuff out. I was like, you know, I wonder if that'll work. And then it worked. And I was like, oh, hey, it worked. How about that? So what I did is I got sick and tired of all this stuff with Barack Obama and his corrupt administration. I truly do and, and did at the time believe that he is the Antichrist, that he was here to bring uh, essentially the Armageddon, the end of the world type scenario. And Hillary Clinton was supposed to come in afterward and do the same dang thing, if not worse. Okay. The whole end times Armageddon thing. That is taken from Ragnarok. And then... Ragnarok is fed back to neo-pagans as an Armageddon end times battle. I've pointed this out in, in other videos, exposing Abraham videos and otherwise. Ragnarok is not an Armageddon type battle. It is the end of the year. Odin is called night. Odin, the spirit of Odin, is in Valhall, which is the cauldron of the great bear moving across the sky during winter nights. In spring, Odin gets swallowed by the wolf. The wolf, poetic kenning. It's called the poetic Edda for a very specific reason. Odin, night, gets swallowed by the wolf. Why would the great bear then be called the wolf that swallows Odin? Because Ursa Major, the Great Bear Constellation, the wolf that swallows Odin, is directly overhead and rebirth is taking place. The sun has increased from the east. Night has been swallowed by day. That is Ragnarok. Now, Christians took that and they manipulated it into an Armageddon end times battle with blood up to the, the bridle of a horse. What is that blood that would be up to the bridle of a horse? It is nothing more than the sun skirting the horizon during the wintertime sky in the extreme north. But they made this Armageddon-type setting, and then they used that setting, and then they fed back to neo-pagans, the third generation and on, that Ragnarok is Armageddon. It's not. And he's been duped. He is gaslighted. He's not only a stoner, he's been gaslighted. He's a gaslighted Christian. Okay, and I believe that that timeline was affected quite drastically, and that was part of this super soldier mission that I have. I was also working with children. I was trying to help the traumatized kids in the group home system. Okay, so that, believe me when I say that's a very, very, very tough job. And I did it for five and a half, almost six years. Okay, so that also makes one a greater statistical anomaly is to suffer all that abuse and continue to be loving and kind. That's why Christ was such a statistical anomaly, you see. And when I understood all of this, when I, when I really grasped all of it. So he makes Christ a real thing, a real figure which he wasn't, a Christ never existed, therefore a, a, a antichrist can never exist, therefore a Satan can never exist. Satanists give a passive credence to a Jesus Christ by saying they just honor the opposite. However, he puts himself in that last sentence on an equal basis as his Christ. Maybe that's pretty fitting. I don't know. I decided, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to eat a bunch of mushrooms. I'm going to get this extremely, extremely high, high frequency. And then I'm going to try something. And we're going to see what happens. And if it works, then cool. And if it doesn't, well, we'll really shot. Right? So what I did is I got in a really, really deep trance state under the influence of these psilocybin mushrooms. I got into a really deep trance state, and I did a mantra. I did a mantra for about 20 minutes. And in this mantra, I flew to the sun and I like pulled some levers. I, you know, pushed some buttons. And basically, basically I changed the, uh, the 
quantum entanglement of the entire solar system by doing this, by creating and changing, uh, basically by putting all this stuff together and then creating a feeling within myself that understood all these things that was in the sun based off of, you know, the interconnection of everything and all the harmonics and all that stuff. So I flew to the sun, I changed my vibe, I ended up using the sun almost like a weapon and sending off a massive solar flare that took out all of the craft, all the negative ET craft, all these Satanists and their anti-gravity mind control type crap, which you have to watch my other videos and know what I'm talking about, and take all of those things out. And in the process, I also kept safe all of the aircraft that I knew were not the enemy, that I knew were our own, okay? And in the process, I might as well have done the whole thing at the end of Endgame, the snap of the fingers, all right? Now, for those of you that haven't seen some of my other videos i'm able to expand my consciousness to like the size of the universe i'm able to shrink it down to the size of an atom i've walked across the surface of the sun i've witnessed events that are so tiny and so fast they can hardly be said to have occurred at all this whole idea of like angelic realms this whole idea of god being real and angels and demons and all that, it's real like it's true it's true okay i remember things that it's like how do you remember that i'm talking like before the flood type stuff you know, for those of you that decided to put a hit out on me, that was a really bad idea, wasn't it? Okay, all right. <clears throat> this guy has some comedic value to him. If you ever go and watch, this video is going to be long enough, but if you ever go and watch his, this, these clips were taken from an hour and a half long video, just this one on Captain America. And... As I watched that whole 90-minute clip, I couldn't help but thinking of one thing, and that is Jim Carrey and the cable guy. The, the kid that sat in front of the television all day long while his mom was out at work, and he just consumed and consumed, and his whole life became a storyline from a movie. And that's how he related to the rest of the world in this disassociated sense of reality there was the joker and his super soldier uh personification is admiral five-star admiral america formerly known as captain america and his the fighters that he has with him are iron man and uh, I don't know, was Wonder Woman in there? Batman, I remember seeing Batman in there. So you see, you see what's going on? And for anybody that wants to bring these negative timelines, all you supervillains want to bring these negative timelines to Earth, you want to try to bring hell to Earth? Well, I'll show you hell. You mocked my words for redemption. You saw my kindness as weakness. Well, now you're going to get the sharp end of the stick. Now you're getting the tip of the spear. Okay. I'm not going to repeat myself. That is the horned headdress wearer called Jake Angeli. Do not call him a shaman. Even though horned headdresses were part of our ancient culture as shown in the prehistoric petroglyphs. He is not a shaman. He is not a pagan. He is a right-wing Christian who's probably done too many drugs. And now, I don't know why he didn't push some buttons and pull some levers up there on the sun to keep his ass out of prison. Or maybe to enlighten him that you know, doing what he did in the Capitol, writing a note to the vice president and walking in there with a spear, even though he may have been let in and he may not have broken in, just walking in. And I I don't think the Capitol, U.S. Capitol is a no spear zone. So I don't know if he even broke any laws there. His, the legality of or illegality of his conduct inside the Capitol, on the Senate dais, is not what's in question here. The tattoos were in question. The headdress was in question. And Antifa or BLM was in question. And shamanism was in question. And I've covered all those points. So, until next time, or 
Tills next to go. Good health, sir. <laughs>